Hello, welcome to Spotlight, brightening dull evenings everywhere. Spotlight, brought to you by the Isle of Man Arts Council. This evening, we drop into rehearsals ahead of a forthcoming production of Willie Russell's classic play, Educating Rita. Hear about a forthcoming exhibition by local artist and sculptor Robert Jones. And there's Manx Etcher, a look ahead to this year's Big Brie Workshop. Remember, do get in touch with any creative artistic endeavours you may be involved in, planning, hoping to create or would really like to, you know the score, put in the spotlight, poetic, visual, theatrical, film, music, literary, mime, film again. Why not? Email spotlight at manxradio.com or direct to me, Howard Kane at manxradio.com. They both end up at the same place. I read them all. Get in touch. What are you waiting for? So it's a good time of year for all things Manx, not just the turnips. The Koosh will be coming up early next month. But before that, there's the annual extravaganza, which is the big Brie workshop in St John's. I headed out there, the centre of the island, to find out more on what's happening this year. Chloe Woolley, um, Manx Music Development Officer, Culture Fanon. Well, the Big Bree Workshop Weekend um, is two days of fun uh, music making, dancing, singing, um, some traditional crafts and Manx language and it's open to youngsters um, aged 10 to 18. So do we get sort of schools coming along or do people go individually? Well, it's in the October half term um, on the Sunday and Monday, um, 22nd and 23rd in St John's Methodist Hall. And it, so it's not in school time, but um, we do have um, youngsters from all over um, the schools. Um, it tends to be year six and above. And um, if they play instruments, that's brilliant. and. We put um, musicians together into little folk groups, um, singers as well. We form a choir, but we also welcome um, children that like acting um, because we devise our own play. And at the end of the weekend, um, we put a concert on together for um, family and friends. And there's usually a theme for the weekend. That's right. And this year, I've chosen fishing. Um, it's quite an obvious one for islanders, really. Um, so um, we're going to explore some of the traditional songs associated with fishing um, as a trade and also some of the stories and folklore. And we're hoping that we'll get a real-life fisherman to come in uh, to teach us some of the traditional crafts that are um, probably getting forgotten nowadays. Yeah, I think that's the case in farming, isn't it? Some of the old sort of styles and the old way things are done do change. But it's, I suppose it's important to actually keep, if we can keep those things alive, then it's great for the next generations. That's right. And even down to some of the folklore that we also practice, I suppose, on a daily basis. Um, I think most people in the Isle of Man know that it's not very good luck to say um, the R-A-T word. Um, so, And that stems from fishing um, superstitions when it was unlucky to have um, four-legged mammals on your boat. So everything had a different name, including uh, the long tail. Long tail, yeah, that's it. <laughs> So the kids coming along, is there still enthusiasm? Because I suppose you look at a lot of the younger generations coming up and the older we get, and when you look back at more each generation, you always feel that they might be more distanced from these sort of things and just obsessed with their phones and laptops and whatever. Is there still a passion for this? I think there is, yes. Uh, as you say, lots of um, young people are more interested in their phones and playing games and chatting to each other. Um, but this sort of its um, integral part of being a kid really isn't it making stuff and making up a play and making up a show having a you know a bit of freedom to have fun and also learn a bit a bit about history um and manx culture at the same time and so why do you think 
because clearly, obviously, working in culture van, and you will think that being in connection with your culture is important for young folks. Why, if someone said to you, why do you think is it important for people to have this understanding of, or at least a, a feeling about your culture, your background, like I said, the music, the written word, poetry, etc., from previous generations? Well, I think um, it gives everyone a sense of place, really. Um, we can't take it for granted. We do need to still keep that knowledge alive um, and make it a living tradition. Um, with Bree, we meet once a month throughout the year and we teach some of the old songs, old Manx songs and tunes and dances. But we also create new ones um, which reference the Isle of Man. We make the children think about their surroundings and the stories and what's happening. Some Sometimes current affairs. We wrote a song about the Laxey Wheel re <laughs> being renovated last year. And... Um, just making it relevant and fun and creative. Um, we've also got um, the older group called Scran, which is um, an offshoot off Brie, and they've just brought out a second album. Yes, I've heard some of that. Yes, so that's like a teenage group um, who practice more regularly, and they come up with their own arrangements, and they've got wonderful experience of going into a music studio and recording and being almost... You know, a bit of fame, <laughs> um, but it's great for their music skills and working together as a team and making choices and decisions about music making. So it's all relevant, um, and if people are learning about the Manx language and culture at the same time, then that's brilliant, isn't it? Scran, actually, yeah, they make a fantastic sound. And uh, John Bark has featured them a couple of times on the folk show on Mike's radio. Um, so if people want to follow in their footsteps, get involved uh, musically or get involved with uh, Brie or the workshops, how do they go about it? Well, they can get in touch with me, um, Dr Chloe Woolley, at um, Culture Vannon. Um, you can get in touch through manxmusic at culturevannon.im. We can have a look on Culture Vannon's website or manxmusic.com and find out details about um, joining Brie. Um, we welcome anyone from um, age 10 upwards. Uh, if you play an instrument, even if you're just starting out or just started, say, flute lessons at school or something like that, then there's a place for you and you'd be very, very welcome to come and join us at Brie. Scran, a group which has come out of the big Brie workshop Wonderful young musicians, marvellous sound they make, really enjoyed. Let's hope they go on to even greater things. You can catch them on John Barker's Folk Show as well from time to time on a Tuesday evening here on Max Radio, 9 o'clock of course. Now we'll be down at the House of Manan in a few weeks back to sample the wonderful wildlife photographer of the year competition. The next exhibition, coming up fast on the rails, is Crucible Drawings and Sculpture of Robert Jones, MRSS. That gets underway on the 21st of October, runs right the way through to the 14th of January next year. 
The exhibition highlights the need to move away from what it says are our capitalist cultures of waste, exploitation and disconnection from nature and to rebel, showcased through works wrought with an undercurrent of the challenging times we are living in. You're tempted already, aren't you? Crucible, we are told, is a warning cry to value our materials, our energy and our environment and to transform our way of life to have any hope for a sustainable future. A melting pot of influences and ideas in a rapidly overheating world. Amen to that, I think, at the moment, we'd all say. And the sculptures show how beauty can be created from discarded materials showcased on plinths made from upcycled oil drums reminding us of the climate crisis being driven at the moment by the continued extraction and burning of fossil fuels. It's going to be a popular one, this I can tell. The drawings show the thoughts and inspiration behind the balance and form that he creates in his sculptures and also give an insight into the creative process behind the three-dimensional work. Now, Robert Jones himself is an established sculptor. He's had solo exhibitions in the UK and in the Isle of Man and his work forms part of the Isle of Man Art Council loan collections on display at schools and in gardens and other public places in the Isle of Man and part of private collections in the UK and here on the island. Work also featured in publications including House and Garden, Gallery and the Oxford Times. As a sculptor, Robert says he's been inspired by the industrial and rural landscapes of the Isle of Man. He started his life working on a farm in the north of the island and on leaving school he served a traditional apprenticeship as a carpenter and joiner and has worked for himself in the building trade in the Isle of Man for 20 years, developing a passion for traditional crafts and materials. For the past 10 years... He's also specialised in the conservation and restoration of old buildings using traditional techniques. Check that out. It's from the 21st of October when the preview is on right the way through until mid-January 2024. Spotlight. Brought to you by the Isle of Man Arts Council. Now, there can't be many of us who haven't seen the film Educating Rita, starring Julie Walters and Michael Caine, of course. The film based on the original 1980 play by Willie Russell. That's now being brought to life on stage in the Isle of Man in a production which can be seen first at the wonderful Peel Centenary Centre and then later at the equally wonderful Erin Arts Centre. I dropped into the final rehearsals in Peel to find out more. Aren't you supposed to be interviewing me? Do I need to? I know. I talk too much, don't I? I don't when I'm at home. I hardly ever talk at all when I'm there. But I don't often get the chance to talk to someone like you. Just tell me to shut up if I go on too much. I wouldn't dream of telling you to shut up. What does assonance mean? <laughs> Lindsay Quayle. <laughs> and uh, director? <laughs> director, no. producer, no. general factotum, no, yes. <laughs> so is this something you've wanted to do for a while? Yes, I have. I've wanted to do it for quite a long time. Um, I love Willie Russell's writing, um, but the uh, licence wasn't available as it was being done in the UK as a professional um, play, so they won't release it for Amdram until that's finished. So I finally got the license about two years ago. So what is it that appeals about the play to you, do you think? Um, I I just love the the characters, the fact that, um, you know, Rita wants to better herself, the professor is um, sort of a, a lonely, sad man who's um, been a brilliant teacher in his time and is now um, despondent and despairing of all his pupils and just some of the dialogue in it is just absolutely brilliant. So casting, well, uh, I suppose it's, from one point of view, you don't have to look around for too many casts. It's a two-hander? Uh, there is that, um, but there's also the very difficult um, scenario where you have two or three people turn up who could all possibly play the part and which one do you choose and then you don't like disappointing people because they've taken the time to to come and turn up but as with all auditions as I know myself from doing many over the years somebody has to get the part so uh, you make a decision and just hope that you've made the right one and I feel very much that I've made the right one in this case which of course I have to say because my cast is sitting over there at the moment. <laughs> We're rehearsals now so tell us tell us who's performing. Um, so we have Jack Verity playing Frank Bryant the professor. Frank of course is very well known um, for playing with the Russian players 
and uh, many other parts as well over the years, and the lovely Kim Quine, who has been with the service players for a number of years now and can be heard on Manx Radio. From the point of view, people might remember the film with uh, Michael Caine and Julie Walters, I think it was. Is the play very different, exactly the same, very or similar? It's very similar. Um, what Willie Russell did in 2000 was he rewrote the play script to take out a lot of the references to the 1980s so that it can be done as any time period that you are particularly doing it in. Um, but there's, there's a slight difference to the, play, uh, to the film because obviously with films you always get lots more characters and you get all things like um, Rita's husband appears in and, and in the film and, and all different things like that which, which you don't get with a two-hander play. But the, the basis of the dialogue is the same um, and it's still got some of the, the wonderful dialogue that you hear in the film. So staging it at the Peel Centenary Centre? Peel Centenary Centre for two nights um, and then we are going down to the Erin Arts Centre as well for two nights. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to it. Both fabulous venues, love them both. They are great, two great club venues and really, really good. And the actual staging itself, have you tried to keep it simple? Is it complex or is it just one set? Um, it's just one set all the way through. Um, I'm trying to make it look as realistic as possible without having to, to have too many pieces on stage. Um, but obviously we want it to look like the office of, of uh, the tutor um, the professor, so we're, we're going down that route, but we'll, we'll see when we actually get to staging it. As long as we have the door that Rita's got to come through that won't open, we can we can manage with everything else. <laughs> Lovely. Let's have a quick word with the cast while we're here then, because we're in the midst of rehearsals. So here we go, uh, over to Kim. Um, well, is this, it's a pretty big role, this one. Yeah, this is um, a personal challenge, I like to call it. It's um, definitely the largest role I've had. Um, but just kind of, you know, coming out of the baby rearing years and, and just trying to figure out what makes you happy. And this came up and I read the script and it's just a fantastic play. It's a fantastic part. I could really, you know, when you read a script and you can imagine it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's my personal challenge, this one. And do you do the Scouse accent? Um, yes, of sorts. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, I suppose, again, you see, have you seen the film as well? Yes, I have, I've purposely not watched all of it yeah. because I don't, you don't want to copy it, but just That's enough to get a, get a feel for the character. And what about actually getting the lines in there? Because it is a case of living with Jack, because obviously it's virtually all you and Jack, or just you or just Jack. Is it a case of just getting those sequences in the head? Yeah, I think the, um, the there's some big chunks of text that you just need to learn. You just have to get on with it. But then in the rehearsals, it's definitely learning the timing from each other, the way each other says the different words and, and where you're moving. And I think then you start bouncing off each other and it helps with the conversational elements. And then the characterisation itself, because it's a bit like, I don't know, Pygmalion or My Fair Lady or something, she starts off a bit of a rough diamond. And by the end, of course, she's, well, she's as good as Frank, really. She's well-read, she's well-rounded, she's educated, and she's a, a sort of an educated woman. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting in that sense, and definitely trying... The first half is, is a kind of longer... It's not really half, it is, it is longer, and setting it all up for her, and then the second half, it really comes into its own, where it kind of starts resolving and, and unravelling in ways, and you see um, kind of parallels to what's been said before but in a slightly different way and I think the writing really lends itself to the characterization it's especially once you get to the second half it's very easy to become that character because you the, the writing just makes you be able to do it really lovely and Jack's here as well your, your character in a way sort of goes the other way because you start off you're a man who clearly is in an academic you've been working there and in a way we sort of see you sort of disintegrate a bit before a, a bit of a renaissance at the end I guess well that's true yes there's one sort of siphoning into the other and whatever have you but 
Um, it, it's, it's a very difficult role and it's a daunting role as well because, I mean, everybody has Michael Caine in their heads. And <laughs> no pressure then. <laughs> no pressure at all. And, and uh, it's difficult for Kim because everybody has Julie Walters. And with the, we don't have any supporting cast either. There's no Maureen Lipman's knocking about or Michael Williams either. So it's just down to uh, we two. And um, we've got a slave driver as a director here. <laughs> She's very hot on these lyrics and, uh, and, and the, the, the diction and everything. But um, it's coming together. Um, I, I do find the task a little bit daunting because I was a head teacher in a previous life and there is a little bit of me in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've just asked... Uh, Kim about her accent and whatever. Well, mine is going to be slightly more northern than Michael Keane's. It's going to be a different character altogether, so I'm not modelling myself off him either. I'm portraying it as I think a head teacher yeah. or a tutor would. And I think that's the right way, isn't it? Because there's nothing to say that Michael Caine's way is the right way. Oh, absolutely not. But, I mean, he's brilliant and um, mine is just different. And how do you find sort of two-handers? Because as you say, at the end of the day, there's nowhere to hide, is there? Well, there isn't. There are, I think two-handers are quite difficult because, uh, you, you know, I mean, monologues are somewhat easier. Um, but two-handers, you've got to be precise, you've got to give the cues, it's got to be the right cue. And you, you're always thinking about your partner because you don't want to uh, let your partner dry up and you want to bring the best out of your partner as well. So that's a, it's a team, it's a team effort and um, we are acting as a team. And that's the whole thing, I think, with any production, isn't it? Exactly that. It is team. It's only as good as the weakest member. I don't think there's any weak members here, but again, if you haven't got a good director, if you haven't got good actors, if you haven't got good backstage staff, they're all there. Well, that's true, yes, it, it is. But uh, it, 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 it is, uh, it's, it's a definite tale of two halves. Um, I, I won't say that when I was a head teacher, I, I was a drunk or anything like that, but I do like playing a drunk. And uh, <laughs> the second half, I'm more or less playing a drunk all the time. And uh, and, and, and it's, he, he does siphon his character into uh, Rita, and uh, he's he's jealous of that. And um, he doesn't like the, um, the Frankenstein that he's produced, actually, but uh, it's great. It's a, it's, it's a wonderful play, and it's different from the film in so much as you do realise how much um, Rita is educated. The film seems to assume that Rita is all of a sudden educated, but the play does tell you how Rita is educated. That's a major difference. And have you been enjoying the challenge? Oh, very much so. It, it has taken up most of the uh, summer. I mean, we've been at this since mid July, and um, we're looking forward to putting it on the stage. Now, we've worked our way through the script. It's a question of polishing it up now. Excellent. I'll just uh, grab a last word with Linz then. So, almost there. Home with Stretch Linz. Uh, give us the dates and times again if people want to come along and see it, and hopefully, lots of people do. Okay. Um, it's uh, Friday and Saturday, the 13th and 14th of October at the Centenary Centre. 7.30 start. Um, it's only £10 for a ticket. It's very, very reasonable for, for theatre these days. The only thing I would say is there is a bit of strong language in it, so I wouldn't say it was suitable for younger people, but just be prepared for that. Um, the Erin Arts Centre, it's on the 26th and 27th, which is a Thursday and a Friday. Uh, we couldn't get the Saturday as they already had bookings. And again, 7.30 start, £10 for a ticket. Yeah. Terrific. Only one thing left to say to everyone. Break a leg. Consonants can also mean the use of identical consonants, but with different vowels. Um, kill, cold, drift, draft, pin, pan, gloom, glee, drink. Right. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it, eh? Those dates again. At the PCC, the Peel Centenary Centre, Friday and Saturday, 13th and 14th of October, 7.30 start, just £10, I think, to get in. And then the 26th and 27th of October at the Aaron Arts Centre, that's a Thursday and a Friday, with the same start time. That's about it for this week. Don't forget, if you want to hear anything again, go to banksradio.com, download the Spotlight podcast, listen where you want. Why not try it whilst hollowing out your turnips? See you next week. Until then, look after yourselves and whatever you're doing, be creative about it. 
Cheerio.